Hello everyone, and welcome to my 21st Pokemon Challenge. It's time to get back into another Gen 5 challenge, but this time we're moving on from the starters and into the rest of the Pokedex. Today we seek to answer, can you beat Pokemon White with only a Patch Rat? Before we get too far into the video, I'd like you all to know that I'm working really hard to produce a new Pokemon Challenge video every week, so if you like this content, please consider liking and subscribing as it would really mean a lot to me and it would help the channel grow. Anyways, let's quickly cover the rules so we can begin. Rule number one, no glitches, hacks, or cheats. I do, however, use speed up, otherwise these videos would take far longer to produce and I'd rather produce them quickly. Rule number two, I can only use one Pokemon in battle. However, because I am not cheating, I do need to use HM Pokemon for travel purposes only. And lastly, rule number three, no items in battle. This doesn't include held items as I use Everstones during some runs and so other held items are also allowed if necessary. With all of that out of the way, let's begin. Our first grueling task is to get our starter. During these non-starter runs, I edit the game itself so that I can start with whatever Pokemon I want, but I change nothing else. What this means is that I still have to reset for the nature that I want. Sadly, in Gen 5, we have to immediately battle both Bianca and Charon right after picking up our starter, and you can't check your Pokémon's nature in battle after Gen 3, so... yeah. Anyways, I decided to get a Jolly Patrat for this run since I noticed that our attack stat was pretty solid, but our speed stat was a bit slow and I wanted to ensure that we could still outspeed in the late game. The Bianca and Charon battles are pretty simple, thankfully, we just trade tackles until we eventually emerge victorious. We then meet with Professor Juniper, who gives us a pep talk before we begin yet another really annoying segment during this challenge, EV training. Normally, I don't really mind EV training, and the first half is alright, but, well, you'll see what I mean later. For now, we knock out collectively 252 of both Patrat and Lillipup for attack EVs. With our attack EV training complete, we're able to move forward into Accumula Town, where we listen to a speech from Getsus encouraging everyone to like, comment, and subscribe before he leaves in fear of driving everyone away. N then approaches us to tell us that having Getsus shield the channel isn't a good look since he's a villain and all, and then N challenges us to a battle. N's only Pokemon is his Purloin, who we're able to completely crush with a tackle. Alright, this is the part I was talking about earlier, the annoying part of EV training in Generation 5. We're looking to knock out 252 Purloin, but the problem is that Purloin is only a 20% encounter on this route, which really sucks. Nevertheless, we persevere and then finally move on from this cursed route. As we finally wrap up the last of our EV training, Bianca interrupts our journey north, challenging us to a battle. Bianca leads with her Lillipup, who we're able to knock out with a single tackle. Following Lillipup is Bianca's Oshawott, who we're also able to knock out with a tackle. The next battle we find ourselves in is yet another battle with Charon in the Trainer School. Charon leads with his Tepig, who we knock out with a tackle. Charon's last Pokemon is his Purloin, who we crunch into pieces. Finally, we can tackle our first gym battle. Since I replaced Snivy for this run, we're up against Chili. Chili leads with his Lillipup, who we hit with Crush for a one-shot. Chili's last Pokemon is his Panseer, who we also hit with Crunch, but fail to knock out while Panseer uses Workup. Chili then heals his Panseer, but it doesn't matter and we knock it out anyways. With our first gym badge acquired, we make our way towards the next town, but we're again stopped for another rival battle with Charon. Charon leads with his Tepig, who we hit with Tackle and fail to knock out, while Tepig eats a berry and then hits us with a crit ember. On the next turn, we finish off the Tepig with another Crunch. Charon's next Pokemon is his Purloin, who we also hit with Crunch, again not knocking it out. We're hit with Fury Swipes, and then we finish off Purloin with Tackle on the next turn. Finally, we're ready for another gym. Oh, never mind. Hi, N. N leads with his P-Dove, who we're able to one-shot with Tackle. Up next is Timber, who we also hit with Tackle while Timber uses Leer. We then use another Tackle and take down the Timber. N's last Pokemon is his Temple, who we hit with Crunch for a knockout. Alright, now we can start our battle with Lenora, our second gym battle. Lenora leads with her Herdier, who we immediately put to sleep with Hypnosis. We then begin stacking Workup while Herdier rests. We manage to use two Workup before Herdier uses Leer against us, and then we use Crunch for massive damage. Herdier then goes for a takedown, which would have knocked us out, but fortunately, it missed. Lenora then heals up Herdier, but we put it back to sleep, and then use Workup another three times before finally knocking out the Herdier with another Crunch. Lenora's last Pokémon is her Watchog, who we take no chances with obliterating it with Crunch before it can one-shot us with Retaliate. 
Miraculously, there are no rival battles between Lenora and Berg, so here we are in our third gym battle. Berg leads with his Whirlipede, who we immediately put to sleep with Hypnosis. We then begin stacking workups, getting two workups in before Whirlipede wakes up and tries to hit us with Screech, which thankfully misses. We then finish Whirlipede off with Crunch on the next turn. Up next is Dwebble, who we crunch into chunks. Berg's last Pokémon is his Livani, who protects against our first crunch, but then we land our second, failing to one-shot and resulting in getting hit with String Shot. Livani outspeeds us on the next turn with Razor Leaf, but then we land our crunch and win the battle. Since we got a break between Lenora and Berg, we're back to our regularly scheduled rival battles. Bianca halts our progress once again as she begs for yet another humiliating battle. So be it. Bianca leads with her Herdier, who lowers our attack with Intimidate. In response, we immediately put Herdier to sleep and begin stacking workups, getting in three before Herdier wakes up and uses Odor Sleuth. We then knock out Herdier with a single Hyper Fang. Bianca then sends out her Daywat, who we're able to one-shot with Crunch. Following Daywat is Muna, who despite knowing of our Crunch, cannot delay the inevitable. Bianca's last Pokémon is her Pansier, who is the last of Bianca's Pokémon to be crunched into oblivion. Taking about 20 steps north of where we just fought Bianca, we find Charon brooding in a sandstorm. Weird place to hang out, but whatever. Charon leads with his Pidove, who hits us with Quick Attack while we use Workup. The same thing happens on the next turn, but on the turn after that we land a Crunch and one-shot Pidove. Up next is Pansage, who we also knock out with Crunch. Charon then sends out his Pignite, who we hit with Hyper Fang for a one-shot, thankfully. Charon's last Pokémon is his Lyford, who we're also able to outspeed with a crit Hyper Fang. We finally make it to Nimbasa City and go on a very romantic date with N. N reveals his position within Team Plasma to us and then challenges us to a battle. N leads with his Sandile, who is the first victim of the run to return. Up next is Scraggy, who also faints after witnessing our friendship. N then sends out his Darumaka, but this time I got a bit ahead of myself and used Crunch, failing to knock out Darumaka and getting hit with a Fire Punch as a result. On the next turn, we finish off the Darumaka with another Crunch. N's last Pokémon is his Sigilith, who we're able to easily one-shot with Crunch. You guys should know my history with Electric-type gym leaders by now, but I'm pleased to say that this is actually the first attempt at Elisa for this run. Elisa leads with her first Emolga, who we knock out with Return, not proccing Static. Elisa then sends out her second Emolga, who we also knock out with a single Return, still no Static procs. Very lucky. Elisa's last Pokémon is her Zebstrika, who outspeeds us with Spark, but it only does about half of our health while we one-shot with the power of Friendship. GG easy, Elisa. Back to our rival battle gauntlet, the real challenge in the game. Karen leads with his Lyperd, who stalls for time with Fake Out. We then use Workup on the next turn, but Lyperd uses Torment, much to my annoyance. I thought things out and decided that using Crunch next would be my best option, but it didn't knock out and we were hit with Pursuit. We then use another Workup since Crunch didn't one-shot, meaning that we're hit with another Pursuit. Finally, we use one last Crunch and take down the Lyperd. Up next is Pansage, who we knock out with Return. Charon thankfully sends out his Tranquil next, but it uses Protect, so we're forced into using Return, which crits. Charon's last Pokémon is his Pignite, who was quite scary. I briefly mauled over how long Torment has lasted and then resigned myself to using Crunch, which to no surprise is incapable of knocking out Pignite. Pignite then eats its berry and hits us with Flame Charge, lowering us down to 2 HP. Thankfully, we still outspeed and knock out the Pignite with Return on the next turn. Our next gym battle is against Clay, who has some rather tanky Pokémon. Clay leads with his Crocorock, who we use Workup against while Crocorock hits us with Swagger. That would prove to be very bad for Clay, as we then proceeded to one-shot his Crocorock with Return. Up next is Palpitoad, who we also obliterate with Return. Clay's last Pokémon is his Excadrill, who we hit with Return, and even with the Swagger and Workup, we're still not able to one-shot. Fortunately, Excadrill then uses Hone Claws. We then snap out of confusion, but Clay decides to heal stall against us for a few turns before we finally wear down his healing supplies and earn the win. As we leave Driftvale, I can feel a chill crawling up my spine. Bianca has caught back up to us and wants another battle. Alright, fine. Bianca leads with her Herdier, who lowers our attack with Intimidate. We begin stacking work up, but Herdier hits us with Takedown for about half of our health, so on the next turn I was scared and knocked out the Herdier with Return. Bianca then sends out her Daywat, who we also knock out with Return. 
Panseer is up next, who we bonk into the pavement with Return. Bianca's last Pokémon is her Musharna, who we crunch into nothing. After suffering through Chargestone Cave, we arrive at the end, where N does his best Gandalf impression. N leads with his Bulldore, the bane of my existence. We hit Bulldore with Return for about half of its health, but then it uses Iron Defense. Pain. We hit Bulldore with another Return for less damage while we're hit with Smackdown. Again, we hit Bulldore with Return, and again we're hit with Smackdown. Finally, we land one last Return and knock Bulldore out. Joltik is sent up next, who we annihilate with Return. N's next Pokémon is his Pharaseed, another annoying wall Pokémon. We put it to sleep with Hypnosis and then use Workup, following that up with two returns to knock out the Pharaseed, though losing a lot of our health due to its ability. N's last Pokémon is his Clink, who we're thankfully able to one-shot with Return, only 14 HP remaining. Before we can fight Skyla, she forces us to follow her up this tower for no reason, and then has the gall to ask us to ring this stupid bell for some reason. Now that we've rung Skyla's bell, she agrees to our challenge. Skyla leads with her Swoobat, who we one-shot immediately with Crunch. Skyla then sends out her Unpheasant, who we hit with Return and failed to knock out while Unpheasant uses Razor Wind. I then figured that Skyla would heal, so I used Workup, but Skyla big-brained and hit us with Razor Wind. Then Skyla heals, but it doesn't matter since we one-shot with Return now. Skyla's last Pokémon is her Swanna, who we're also able to completely overwhelm with the sheer might of friendship. Oh boy, another Charon battle! I can't wait! Charon leads with his Unpheasant, who we knock out immediately with Return. Charon then sends out his Pignite, who we're also able to bonk into unconsciousness with Return. Charon's next Pokémon is his Simisage, who is yet another victim of our friendship. Charon's last Pokémon is his Lyford, who desperately tries to stall for time, but nothing can stop the bond Patrat and I share. It's time for our seventh gym battle. This time we're facing off against Bryson. Bryson leads with one of the best Pokémon of all time, who we sadly have to knock out with a crit return. Bryson then sends out his Bear Tick, who we also crit return for a knockout. Bryson's last Pokémon is his Cryogonal, who we break into pieces with return. N then decides to become the main character, awakening a cool dragon that fits him way better than Zekrom does. N basically tells us that we're a noob and that we need a legendary dragon to be on his level. N doesn't understand that his time as the main character is limited, since we quickly obtain the legendary dragon we need. Sadly, our dragon is currently a stone, so we've gotta go wake it up. For some reason, as we're on our quest to awaken our dragon and stop N from dramatically changing the Unova region, Bianca decides that this is the best possible time to stop us and challenge us to a battle. Whatever. Bianca leads with her Stoutland, who lowers our attack with Intimidate. We try to immediately put Stoutland to sleep with Hypnosis, but we miss, meaning that Stoutland can use Workup. We then begin using our own Workups, getting in two before using Return in one-shotting Stoutland. Up next is Samurott, who we easily knock out with Return. Bianca then sends out her Semi-Seer, who is also bonked into the Stratosphere with Return. Bianca's last Pokémon is her Musharna, who we obliterate with Crunch, winning our last battle against this cursed rival. We arrive at our destination right on time for another Getsa speech, where he tries to warn the masses of our approaching Patrat, but once we show up, he quickly flees the scene. Iris and Drayden try to explain something about the dragon we have in our backpack, but since I don't really care about the dragon, we challenge Iris to a battle instantly. Iris leads with her Fracture, who we're surprisingly able to one-shot with Return. Up next is Drodagon, who we batter with Return but fail to knock out, meaning that we're hit with Night Slash. On the next turn, Iris heals up Drodagon, but we use another Return to lower it back down. Iris yet again heals, but this time we use Workup and then a Return to take down the Drodagon. Iris's last Pokémon is her Haxorus, who we're thankfully able to one-shot after the Workup buff. As we make our way to the Pokémon League, we're stopped one final time by Bianca and Charon. Charon insists on testing us before the Elite Four, even though he's never ever beaten us. Anyways, Charon leads with his Unpheasant, who we try to put to sleep with Hypnosis but miss while Unpheasant uses Razor Wind. We again try to use Hypnosis and fail, meaning that we're hit with Razor Wind. Again, we try to Hypnosis, but this time Unpheasant uses Detect, so we fail once more. Finally, we're able to land Hypnosis, allowing us to set up three workups before Unpheasant wakes up and uses Razor Wind. 
we then finally land a return and one-shot this stupid bird. Up next is Ambor, who meets its end at the hands of our friendship. Charon then sends out his Simi-Sage, who is yet another victim of return. Charon's last Pokémon is his Lybird, who doesn't even bother trying to stall with Fake Out, allowing us to beat it into the ground with Return. The first of the Elite Four that we choose to start with is Chantal. Chantal leads with Kofagrigus, who we immediately put to sleep with Hypnosis. We then use two workups before Kofagrigus wakes up and hits us with Psychic. Not wanting to risk being hit by Will-O-Wisp, we crunch Kofagrigus out of existence. Up next is Golurk, who we also hit with Crunch, bringing down this giant with ease. Chantal then sends out her Chandelure, who is also very easy to one-shot with Crunch, though we're sadly burned by a Flame Body, which lowers our attack. Chantal's last Pokémon is her Jellicent, who we pop like a balloon with Crunch. I figured that the next Elite Four member we should try should be Marshall, since he'd probably be the most difficult. This fight actually didn't go all that bad, all things considered. Marshall leads with Throw, who we immediately put to sleep with Hypnosis. We then use Workup and then a Return, one-shotting the Throw. Following Throw is Conkledur, who we're thankfully able to knock out with a single Return. Me and Xiao is sent out next, who fails to outspeed us and falls to our Return. Marshall's last Pokémon is his Sock, who we immediately put to sleep so that it can't take advantage of Sturdy. We then beat Sock with Return, procking Sturdy. On the next turn, Marshall heals up his Sock, but we bring it back down again with a return. The same thing happens on the next turn, and then finally we're able to knock out the Sock, winning the battle. I thought that Marshall was going to be the most difficult of the Elite Four, but I was wrong. Grimsley was, but only because I did not understand that Hypnosis can actually be used on Dark-type Pokémon. My bad. Anyways, Grimsley leads with his Scrafty, who we put to sleep immediately after finally figuring out Hypnosis can be used against it. We then begin stacking workups, getting in two before Scrafty wakes up and hits us with Brick Break for huge damage. We then retaliate with Return, one-shotting Scrafty. Grimsley's next Pokémon is his Crocodile, who we're able to one-shot with Return despite the Intimidate lowering our attack. Grimsley then sends out his Bisharp, who we put to sleep immediately, allowing us to use a workup before crushing Bisharp with a single return. Grimsley's last Pokémon is his Lyford, who stalls for time with Fake Out, but we're still able to take it down one turn later. Our last challenge within the Elite Four is Caitlyn, who poses basically no threat against us. Caitlyn leads with her Reuniclus, who we use Workup against, tanking a Focus Blast for almost our entire health bar. Okay, my bad, I had no idea that it knew that. We then crunch on the next turn, one-shotting Reuniclus. Up next is Sigilith, who we're also able to easily one-shot with Crunch. Caitlyn then sends out her Gothitelle, yet another victim of our crunching spree. Caitlyn's last Pokémon is her Musharna, but I don't care how cute Musharna is, Patrat will end it with Crunch like all of those before it. By the time we finally reach the champion, it turns out that N has stolen our glory and become the new champion first. We pursue N to take back our main character status, but Getsis once again stops us, this time just to thank you all for watching the video. Finally, we're ready to battle N, but first we have a neat cutscene to enjoy where both of the dragons show up and basically do JoJo poses before our championship battle. We're then able to catch Zekrom after this whole thing, but I should note that during this battle, I had to fill up my party with six Pokémon, otherwise the Legendary Dragon will always be moved to the front of your party, which is an issue that we had in our Snivy-only Solar Run a few challenges ago. We catch Zekrom and send it to the PC, finally opening the stage for our last battle against N, Champion of the Unova Region. N leads with his Reshiram, but instead of finding its rival Zekrom, Reshiram is instead faced with something far more powerful and fearsome, by Patrat. We immediately put Reshiram to sleep with Hypnosis and then begin stacking Workup. We're able to use Workup twice before Reshiram wakes up and drops a Fusion Flare on us for about half of our health. It doesn't matter so much as we're able to one-shot with Return on the next turn. N's next Pokémon is his Clinklang, but I could tell it was acting a bit sus, and it ended up being his Zoroark, meaning that we're able to one-shot with Return easily. Up next is the real Clinklang, who proves to be just as fragile as Zoroark. N then sends out his Vanillux, one of the best Pokémon ever, and we're forced to knock this majestic ice cream monster to the ground. N's next Pokémon is the one I fear the most, his Caracosta. Caracosta has Sturdy, so we can't one-shot it. 
To get around this, we put it to sleep with Hypnosis and then beat it with Return to proc Sturdy. And then heals up Caracosta, but it doesn't matter since we then finish it off on the next turn. Eden's last Pokemon is his Archeops, who we're easily able to take out with one last return. As it turns out, even though we've beaten N, there's still one last battle for us before we win this challenge. Getsus, the greatest advocate for the channel during this video, reveals that he was really only promoting the channel so that he could take advantage of us in this final battle. Getsus then challenges us to a battle while we're stunned from this awful revelation. Getsus leads with his Cofagrigus, who we immediately put to sleep with Hypnosis before it can toxic us. We then use Workup, and on the following turn, we crunch Cofagrigus to knock it out with ease. Getsus's next Pokemon is his Hydreigon, who we also put to sleep immediately before stacking another Workup. We then finish off Hydreigon with a return, felling the Mighty Dragon. Bofalant is our next opponent, who despite having so much fluff to protect itself, we're able to knock it out with a crit return. Seismitoad is up next, who also cannot hope to stand up to the power of friendship. Getsus then sends out his Bisharp, who we're sadly unable to one-shot. We're then hit with Night Slash for about half of our health, and then Getsus heals Bisharp. This time we get a high roll and one-shot the Bisharp. Getsus' last Pokemon is his E-Electros, who we're able to outspeed and beat into the floor with Return, finally ending the tale of Patrat. I'm super happy with how this run went, as Patrat had a very fun move pool. I had completely forgotten that Patrat had access to Hypnosis as well as Workup, which sync very well together when Hypnosis manages to connect. Patrat also having access to Crunch meant that we were able to get through Chantal without issue, which I had initially been pretty concerned with. All in all, I'm super proud of Patrat, as once again another early route Pokemon has shown that it has what it takes to get through the game all by itself even against a legendary Pokemon. The final time for this run was 25 hours and 18 minutes, which is the slowest of the black and white runs thus far, though it's only 2 hours and 8 minutes slower than Oshawott. I think the reason why Patrat is a bit slower is because the EV training took a little bit longer this time, as well as a fair bit of Audino grinding I did prior to facing Iris. Before we end things off here, I wanted to let you all know that I streamed this run over on Twitch, which I plan on doing weekly. Also, if you like this video, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe as it would help me out a lot. I've got new Pokemon challenges coming out weekly, so if you like this video, there are plenty more to come. If you'd like, feel free to leave a comment to let me know how you felt about the video since I love seeing what you guys think about my content. If you're interested in hanging out, feel free to follow the link below to either my Twitch, my Discord, or my Twitter if Twitter is still around when you're watching this video. This has been Shro, and thank you for watching.